Hi everyone, my name is Jake and today I'd like to share tool tips and tricks on toning your comics. This video will cover technical tips and advice on preparation, adding tone, and reducing moiré, all of which can be accomplished in Clip Studio Paint. For other videos and tutorials on the topic, check out the links in the description. The big difference between adding tone or adding color to your comics is the preparation behind it. Before you start your comic, if you're considering to ever print one day, do all of your work in tone in high resolution of at least 300 ppi, or pixels per inch. You can always scale down, but you can never scale up. For toning, when you create a new comic file, make sure under basic expression color that it's set to gray. Note that the default frequency is set to 60, which is 60 LPI, or lines per inch. You can change this to any size you want, but the ideal manga frequency is kept roughly 50 to 60 LPI. We'll just stay here at 60 to keep things simple. Keep this number in mind though, because we're gonna address this later. Once we've gotten our lines down, we can move on to toning. There are a few different ways you can add tone. You can add tone through new tone in the menu bar. Do this by going to Layer, New Layer, Tone. A simple tone settings pop-up menu will appear, showing options for frequency, density, type, and angle. Remember that when we first set up, we set our comic's default frequency to 60, so 60 LPI is what we'll stick to. Density is how packed the tone is on screen. The higher the density, the closer the dots, the darker the tone. When you're done, click OK, and your new tone layer will be created. Use the masking layer applied to draw and erase tone where you want it around your page. You can also add tone through the materials folder. Here you can even find fun varieties to make your panels stand out, ranging from tones for atmosphere to fun unique patterns. To find them, go to the monochromatic category in your materials folder. You can find regular tone patterns under here under the basic tab. If you look closely, you'll see numbers like 50 LPI, 40%, 30% and so on. Since our default frequency is 60, we want to find 60 LPI. You can locate them easily by looking up the keyword at the lower left of the materials window under default tags. Select 60 line and all the available 60 LPI tones will be singled out. From there, you can see percentages followed by circle or line. Circle and line are pretty self-explanatory. The percentages represent the density of the fill. When you've selected your tone, you can either drag and drop it onto your page or selecting one of two options. Paste selected material to canvas or replace editing layer with selected material. Pasting will create a new layer with the tone, while replacing will replace the current layer you have selected, so be careful. You can also further edit the settings of the tone by selecting it in the materials folder and finding settings of toning at the bottom, which gives you the tone settings menu again. The final method you could use is to color in grayscale and then let the program translate it into tone. This is especially useful if you're used to applying color. Simply create a new layer and color your page in grays. And when you're finished, go to the layer properties window and select the icon labeled tone. Make sure to check your settings that your frequency is set at 60 LPI. To enable transparency, go to the density category Click the drop down menu and select Use Brightness of Image. You can also set up patterns this way from the materials folder if they don't already have tone applied to them. Now that you have your tone applied, you can enhance the quality by using brushes to create more interesting texture to the application, whether it's drawing or erasing. Study the masters and experiment to see what you can come up with. When you're finally done and ready to export, you'll likely come across the digital tone's greatest enemy. Moiré. Moiré is the result of superimposing one screen on top of another, showing wavy lines on an image where two or more grids overlap each other. This is most common when viewed from a computer screen, and this often happens when looking at a comic from a resolution that it wasn't created in, such as when it's resized for the web or on your phone. A way you can reduce this is to have taken all the steps to screen tone at your optimal print size. This is why following your comic frequency is so important. Then when exporting, under color, set your expression color to gray, and under advanced settings of color, turn off enable tone effect for layer. Under output size, select specify output size. 
change the unit to pixels and set height to 1000 or whatever is recommended for the website you're posting on. Then finally, under process when scaling, select for comic, click OK, and you're done. Congratulations, you've successfully toned your comic. What's really wonderful about Clip Studio is that all these tools are available by default and there's a large library of tools made by users for users, all available in the Clip Studio Asset Store. Although I believe ultimately the tools don't make the artist, Clip Studio makes the comic creating process incredibly streamlined and user-friendly for beginners and masters alike. I hope you found this video helpful and I wish you luck on your comic journey. Thank you for watching and until next time.